G'day everyone, my name is David Mine. Welcome back to episode two of FTR TV at Nature Aquarium's MAFA 101 day. So yesterday I showed you guys all those clips of the distributors and suppliers, showed you the corals around the tank. Today we're gonna go for a walkthrough and have a look at the fish they've got down from Cairns Marine. Um, and what are we else? We've got to talk about the prize that they're giving away and a few other things as well. Shane's got a couple of demos, but we'll turn around now and check out some fish. Booyah! Hey Shane. What's going on? How are you going? Um, I'm doing better today. Oh, better good? now, better today. I'm better, still clearly better now hungover. For a feed? I'm still clearly hungover though. Why are you hungover? Because I don't learn from my mistakes. <laughs> what are you doing here? Um, these are the uh, frags that we did before in the fragging demo. Yeah. I've still got a few to glue down, but I thought I would just put a couple of them back in the tank and I'm going to glue the rest of them down. Beautiful. So what are you doing in nature aquariums? Why are you here? Um, Why are you in Melbourne? Well, we come down here for the uh, little beginners event and um, did some uh, run through and Q and A with um, with beginners and trying are we, to help are we them. calling it the Mafa One Hundred One Day? Yeah, well, that's what that, we've that's done. What I named it in my video. Oh, cool. Well, so, well that was what the first so one was called up in Brisbane. <laughs> yep. And uh, so yeah, Mafa One Hundred One Day and yep. yeah, get some beginners. Um, people that are into freshwater typically came and there was yeah, a, few, a few people up there and we had some really good questions thrown at us. It was quite, Beautiful. quite good. I can see um, that the tanks are fully stocked with corals now that you've been down here. So I assume that you're sort of helping them with their marine section as well, is that right? Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, just sort of trying to organise things a little bit for them and uh, their nature aquariums are quite new to the marine scene. So, um, I mean, I'm... I'm not really uh, into a, like a retail kind of thing, but um, Steve felt that I could do it, and yeah, thought I'd give it a crack. Happy days! And um, so yeah, with your touch try people my should hand. Definitely pop in and uh, and visit and say hello. Yeah. How much longer are you here for? Uh, until the 24th. 24th December. of this month. So yes, December. Fantastic. So, and you head home um, for Christmas, obviously. Yeah, pretty much. So fantastic. Um, Sarah needs to come down and give Shane a hug. He's here for another week. Um, come down and pick his brain. He has a lot of information. He's been able to help me a lot with my tank as well, which is fantastic. But it's always good to see you again, Shane. Say bye. Oh, see you later. Blow kiss. <laughs> Blow kiss. <laughs> Blow kiss. Blow no. kiss. Blow a kiss. No. Blow a kiss. Yeah, 
you have to bear with me because I'm probably going to lose my voice. Um, Why is that? Because I'm irresponsible and was out till 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I don't learn from my mistakes. Bloody Lenny. Yeah. Um, Alright, I'm going to do a bit of a fragging demonstration. Um, basically, I should do the uh, PPE. You should wear gloves. These are interesting gloves. Um, because some corals have toxic slimes and things like that, particularly zoanthids or pallies, which have palytoxin on them. Other corals um, can just sting you or have slime and irritating substances, little creatures like bristle worms and stuff like that, that when you break the coral apart, it's going to come out and get you on the finger. Well, there, was a, little... there was a family in Adelaide that found out about palytoxin the hard way, right? Yeah. Mm. That, I forget whether that was fragging or whether they were trying to kill pests or something, but yeah, that was a fun hospital day for them. <laughs> um, I have these, and I couldn't find the clear safety glasses, so I have these orange ones for when I actually do some cutting. And you don't want the coral slime in your eye, it's really bad. Um, first off, I'll start with showing you a few things I'm going to use. Frag plugs, it's a million different types. Um, these are just ones that the shot carries. Soak them in water first, some of the aquarium water. Um, they have little bubbles that come out of them and it's good when you soak them, get them wet, it makes the glue set a bit better on there. Another thing, we have Seachem Reef Dip, iodine based dip, so it's for post frag. Um, after you cut a coral, you can get little infections in it and things like that. So the iodine based dip will help ward off any of those little infections and help the coral heal better. We have coral glue and it's gel super glue, cyanoacrylate. Um, it's safe for cutting corals, gluing corals, all that kind of stuff. It's human grade. Um, and you use that to stick it down. You can use other things for bigger frags like putties and um, even like the aquaforest stone fix and the poly glue as well, that kind of stuff. Um, different applications, different glues. Um, we have coral bone cutters. Um, you can buy these at all your good local fish stores. Um, even though they're stainless, they still rust. A good little care tip for these ones are obviously shop use. You don't get all the time to um, do proper maintenance on them. But uh, my ones at home get a very, very, very light smear of coconut oil. And it's pretty inert, but before you use them, I wipe it off as well. And I've had mine for years and they don't rust out after doing that. Um, various buckets and tubs full of different things. Oh, and a razor blade for other applications of fragging. You have tweezers if you aren't very dexterous. And another one you might want to use is a Dremel or any sort of rotary cutting tool, anything like that. This has an abrasive cutoff wheel on it, but the one I use at home has a uh, tile cutting blade, a little diamond blade. It's quite handy as well. I won't need it today, but I thought I'd just show you that you can use something like that as well. Oh, if you do use you cut from the bottom using that. Um, avoid cutting through the fleshier parts of the coral as the heat will damage it. Um, Alright, so the things we're fragging today is uh, Rose Leptoceras. It doesn't look very flattering under the uh, room lights here, but um, it needs some cleaning up as it's a wild coral. It's got some dead coral branches, some sponges and things like that in there, so we're going to clean it up make it one nice little piece and a few frags. The other one is this acro here, little millipora, and uh, it's quite an ugly colony. Um, got some broken edges and things like that, so it's gonna be good to propagate. And another one, we have some zoanthids. So these are the ones you've gotta be careful of when you're fragging. Um, they're all closed up now, but there's another little coral, there, little favites or something like that. Um, they can squirt juices and stuff like that, and if they get in your cuts and eye, it's not good. All right, so I'll start with these George's glasses. Um, these make things really hard to see. <laughs> these, are, these are not good for just everyday use. Um, Don't drive with them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they're meant to stop things going in my eye, but they're wet, and now there's just crap all over my face. Anyway, um, cool. So when you 
the size of the frag, um, especially in like your SBS, can um, improve. So a bigger chunk is obviously going to have a better chance at survival. Um, little, this is a dead section that I'll cut off anyway, but if you're being really cheap with your frags and making tiny little things like that, which I do see people quite often in like people selling frags or something like that, or little things like that, it, it's no, they're, it's not really good. I like to be generous with frags. So if you're gonna make one, get quite generous with it and they just crunch. It's just calcium carbonate, it crunches up and um, it shatters quite well with all your plating corals. And that, all right, so there's the pieces. You don't have to worry about being out of water for like a while and have to ditch these really hard to see for they're meant for looking in tanks not normal um, but uh, yeah you don't have to worry about it being out of water for too long um, they're used to it at low tides in the ocean so but it can go back there I'll pull these out of the water they've soaked long enough and I'll put some of the reef dip in because they are fresh cut frags and so now they need a um, little bit dip in that just to give them the best chance And um, then what you want to do I should have brought a towel down here but it's what shirts are for pat the base of it dry pat the base of the frag tile dry or the frag plug put some glue in there And stick that down. Make sure it's the right way up. Particularly if it's a uh, in the in the daylight, you sometimes can't quite see the colour of the coral. So you make sure it's the right way up. And done. Oop, that actually fell off. It's good though. Now it's stuck. All right, and then back in the dip, and I'll leave that there for a few minutes. Um, the next one I'll frag is this acro. Again, with the uh, the generous size frags, sometimes you want your frags to look good as well. So, um, it, uh, so if you want to trim up a colony you've got at home, want to look good. So, for example, I would keep all of that and I'd put that back in the aquarium. So, remove that to start with, and that's. An all right looking piece you can put that back in your aquarium then so the frags then would be these guys here and you can snip off any of those branches in the splash zone at the front there um, all of these while not being a good looking frag they're going to be fine they're all all of those um, cut marks the damage there that will all heal over um, in good parameters. It's gonna want a couple of weeks at most. You'll see color over that. After six or so weeks, you can even see little branches coming out of the center of that. So while it doesn't look great, that can be quite a good frag. Um, can like, yeah, chalk and cheese, but they're both fine. into the iodine dip. This one's a bit bigger frag, so he's a bit more blue. And wash off any debris on there as well. Have it dry. And we'll sit it down in that blue. Like that. Um, if you wet it, the um, cyanoacrylate coral glue, it's uh, like moisture cure, so they um, it cures when it's wet and skins off as soon as you wet it. Um, this one might actually be better, balancing up that way. I don't have a rack, I usually have a little egg crate rack or something, I'm half unprepared, but uh, I should be able to balance that there until it sets. 
Yeah, and the coral will be fine out of the water. Um, if, as long, especially in the shade indoors like that. Oh, look at that. We have, uh, when he's just handed us a uh, little frag rack here. Oh, I've ruined it. Oh, they don't quite fit the holes. They're meant for the smaller plugs. It's all right, the thought was there. It was balanced and everything, I took it off. All right, you just have to trust me that that glue will set. Actually, that will work right there, good. Cool, yeah, you can use that. That's a little magnetic frag rack that you can um, put inside of the tanks. Looks like live rock. Cool, all right, the last one, I will put these back on because uh, these are the ones that you really don't want to get in your eye. These are anthids. There's a couple of different ways you can frag them. Um, in particular, it's a really nice zoanthid um, and you've only got a couple of them and you want to share them around or propagate them kind of thing, so then you're going to want to take single polyps out. So that's when you're going to need your razor blade. So you have to scrape the surface of the rock and right in underneath it. And sometimes there's a little tether between the two or between its uh, neighboring polyps. So you have to slice down at that and then you can lift out that polyp there oh, there's another little tether on that as well that's a single zoanthid polyp so it's, it's quite nothing so um what i was saying before about um stingy frags sort of thing this zoas are probably one of the exceptions for that because um, you can get some quite rare colors and it's quite common to see single polyps on tiles um, this is where tweezers might come in handy um, because they are, can be difficult to handle but they're a little bit sticky so yeah um, I have to take these off so I can see again um, in, make sure it's up the right way it's quite so this is now the underside and just push it onto the glue like that um, and that will be a um, a few weeks and you should see little buds all around that from growing. Um, another way if you were to be quite generous with your frags of these guys you can quite simply just like the others cut chunks of rock out of it. Um, so on, on that there's about five or six polyps on that little piece there. Um, and cut however you want and again stick it to a a little frag tile or a rock or anything and um, but yeah dip in your um, iodine dip for um, about five or so minutes after you've done any cuts should also if you cut any of the mother colonies as well a bit of an iodine dip after that is also good um, just because you've got a, a wound along here and you might want to make sure it gives it the, um, the best chance before it goes back into your display tank but um, yeah does anyone have any questions about it Do you have to work relatively quickly? Um, in the uh, in the shade, indoors, it's fine. Um, like I said, this is still out of water. There's, and the glue is now dry, but it, the coral, there's nothing wrong with it. They spend a lot of time out of the um, water. A lot of corals do come out of the water at low tide and such like that, but even half an hour, it, I wouldn't recommend it, but you're only gonna be one of five or so minutes at max anyway. Um, and um, that was one of the little two anthems in there. So yeah, your dips are typically about five minutes. But yeah, if you know you're going to take a while, try and uh, break it down into doing just that one coral, get that one sorted, and then come back and do another if you've got a big fragging job ahead of you. But yeah. Can you frag any coral? You can frag any coral. Any coral? Any coral at all. Um, Scolomia, there's a, heard a few little stories saying you can't frag heliofungus. We, done that now and um, got from the, the half moon shape left they start growing another little smaller half out of the mouth um, frag anemones that I really wish that would um, happen a lot more a lot more frag needs to happen um, sharing around and things like that um, especially with rarer type corals it makes the um, yeah hobby that bit more enjoyable if everyone could have a rare coral or a nice colored coral yep. so. are there ones harder to do than others um, typically your LPS corals can be harder um, or a little bit less forgiving 
Um, so you score a mirror or something like that. Once you frag that in half or in quarters, it's not going to grow again overnight. Like a, an acro frag, you can see that in crust in a week. You can have it in crust with the frag tile in a, in a really good parameters. Um, Zoanthids, in a couple of weeks, you can see new buds, but LPS, so if you're using scullies or hammers, for example. Takes forever. Um, yeah, you're looking at years in most cases to get them to look like their parent coral again. Um, yeah. But yeah, there is ways to sort of speed that up, of course, parameters and feeding keep them in check, but yeah. Um, so, a frag's fine to go back into a display tank? The frags, definitely, yeah. I would recommend putting them back into where they came from so that uh -huh. the parameters are matched, but so. Um, but they, I get that was to give them the best chance, but they are quite forgiving as well, so you can um, yeah, put them into a separate frag tank. But typically, use something like that or any type of frag rack that would be in your tank anyway. You grow them out and then trade them around with your friends or anything like that. So, so they don't need any special treatment once they're back in your display tank, like nah, they're gonna, flow, flow locations or anything like that? Um, the, actually, one thing I will say with the frag racks like these or anything, when they're typically in a tank, um, when you have your corals um, that you've taken out of the display, say they're usually on the sand bed, you can, they can sometimes look like they're suffering, not doing quite well, and it's a bit, mainly because of the change. You've had them down here, you've fragged them, and then they suddenly end up here right under the light, so you're burning them. Um, that's one common thing that I notice. So if you keep the corals that you've fragged in a similar location to where they came from. So don't necessarily move a frag rack all the way to the top yeah, of the tank. Um, when I do frags, I keep all mine on the sand, um, for a few weeks, just like lower light, and if, then I put them back up if I need it. So, yeah. Cool. Um, or you could move the frag rack down. So. Yeah. Yeah. Would you frag inside of the tank? Can you frag inside, like cutting? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, if your aquapora or anything like that is encrusted to the, um, I'll take these out of the reef dip now and put them in this, but if your aquapora yeah. is encrusted to your rock work, you yeah. certainly can frag inside the tank. Um, it makes sure if you're using bone cutters or anything like that, just make sure they're free from oil or clean because um, you don't want to put any contaminants in the tank. But yeah, you can reach down there and cut chunks off that. Um, but yeah, what, once you bring it out, then that's when you'd work on the frag outside the tank. You can use um, these glues underwater, but you have to be really careful. Um, keep pressure on them and if you let any water suck back up inside the um, bottle it's all over it's ruined the bottle so um yeah it, it's going to be easy to do out but yeah you certainly can cut the corals underwater especially if they're glued to your rock work so, yeah. awesome thanks shane no worries been sitting there it's just a gray cement powder that you um it's reef safe of course um it sets quite fast and um, you don't need a lot of water. When I first used this, I thought it would be like normal cement mix for fence posts and stuff. I think I made it too runny, so. But yeah, you don't need a lot. It does say to mix it with a um, spoon, but I don't, don't really have one at my fingertips right now, so I'm gonna get a little bit dirty here. It's great. Um, you just keep flashing water in it until it's um, nice consistency. It's about there. It's probably one of the easiest products to work with. I think I've even made that even slightly runnier and I was just dribbling water. It seems to um, have water, like hold water quite well. So yeah, but yeah, just you've essentially just made cement. It's a really good product. A lot of people use it for their aquascapes. Um, you can use this on huge things. This is a uh, like a, it, using these two little rocks is not going to test out what this stuff can do. But already in my hands now, it's get like it was quite runny before. You can see in my hand, it's already falling up. It's setting in my hands. It's quite a fast setting uh, product to use. So use that. You push that down into a crack in the rock. Make sure it's anchored. Pat, pat it all down in there. Obviously, you wouldn't be getting as dirty as I was because you'd use a spoon or something like that. And uh, then push it in there. Smooth it up around it. It's 
already, I mean, it's holding itself right there. The stuff in this, it, it does set really quick. It's excellent for doing quick jobs. And I just put a bit more. You don't even need that much. I just made a bit too much, but... Um, it's best to do this with the rock out of the water. Yeah, you can't use this product in, in the, the water, water okay. because yep. it'll just cloud dissolve, and dissolve, yeah. Yep. It's once the, um, the product activates and starts, uh, it has like a little bit of like a chemical reaction sort of thing. Yep. Um, and it, it gets, it sets, and it, it, I'll show you that very soon. That will be quite rigid there. It's not, yep. it doesn't take very long at all, but yeah. Okay. 15 20 minutes and that will be stone so, um, you can use it use the uh, the stone fix on wet rocks but if you bear in mind that the moisture off the rocks will add to the moisture in that make it quite runny uh, change your curing times and things like that <laughs> but yeah you will not get those apart that is it is a quite a good product a lot of people are using it for escapes over putties and things like that but um yeah it's that's basically it um if you're using it um i don't know if people are familiar with cement and concrete you probably shouldn't get it on your hands because it does dry your hands out and oh, it's not too bad when it's yeah i'll flush it really good but um yeah use a spoon like the instructions say i didn't really have one on me but yeah and about 15 minutes later that is never coming apart so yeah Thank you. Thank you. So we're here with Stephen from uh, Nature Aquariums, the uh, king of the aquarium here. Um, he's going to just have a quick chat with us about the prize that's out behind us here and some of the lovely sponsors that jump on board to actually make it happen. So, how you doing, Steve? Thank you, David. I'm doing very well. We've had a fantastic weekend. It's been a very um, busy weekend. Thank mate. you to everyone. Uh, I just want to run through, through quite a few of those thank yous. Yep. And I hope I don't forget anybody. Yep. Um, first thing, first a lot of people I want to thank is the staff here at Nature Aquariums. Um, it's been a tremendous effort by them. Uh, we've got 11 people on the team and uh, they've all worked really hard. Uh, so thank you to the team here at Nature Aquariums. Well done. Thank you to the suppliers. Um, I'll, I'll talk you through the Cade here and the various suppliers that have yep. assisted in donating free yep. all of this product we're going to give away in one hour's time. We'll start with the tank. It's a Cade Pro Reef tank. Um, the best of the best. We have a, a glass panels and aluminium tank, so you, you, you see water can't get into it and damage it in any way. A the great tank, sun. that's why I picked it <laughs> myself. Uh, well, that's why we've got them everywhere in here in the room too. Yep. And there's another one here. Um, which, which, which is on sale, by the way. Yeah, this well. If someone comes down by 6 o'clock today, they'll get, they'll we'll get, take uh, it. They'll get uh, $400 in coral with that tank, all right? Um, so, this in the, in the sump set up here, um, we have a, um, a, a Hammond skimmer from Joy that's been donated. We have this fabulous new Pax Bell, and there, there's this big brother there looking like a Christmas tree. Uh, fabulous cheddar reactor for nutrient reduction. Yeah. Um, we've also got um, a, a reactor in here. Uh, it's all running and running very well. We're going to take the water out to move it when someone wins it though. Yep. Um, up top, we have uh, the Focustronic light, which is in this demo mode now. So yeah, there it goes. So you'll yep. see that moving around. So it I follows spoke, I spoke the sun. to David before about that. So it moves that's around. part of it. There it goes again. And um, we've got a Glamorca in here for fabulous flow as well. So you've got a great um, crossflow pump there, providing lots of flow when we get that in there. The Real Reef Rock's been donated by Addicted to Fish as well. Um, and a, a lovely, neat little scape there. A lovely little bomb in the middle with lots of space around the side. Um, and, and, and you know, what started it all, as I say, thank you to uh, Kate Australia for that donation to kick us off. So none, none of the other those things would have happened without that. Um, so thank you so much to the suppliers. Tremendous effort. Um, and now the, pri the prize pool is significant. Like, this, this is, this is like ridiculous. six, seven thousand dollars. It's like winning yeah. a car. Uh, well, like, yeah, nearly like yeah, winning it a actually car. is winning a car. Yeah. And in an hour's time, someone's going to win that car. Which is pretty crazy. Um, thank you to all the customers and the people that came down today and contributed. We have hundreds and hundreds of people that have entered um, and. Um, yeah. Had a great selection of coal that we had to choose from down here and other bits and pieces for their brief tanks. Um, and um, then we've got extra entries in the, in the prize also. Thank you to those people who also contributed. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to check my list, mate, because I don't want to forget anybody. Aquaforest. I next to the tank while you Aquaforest, think about it. So Aquaforest um, are donating the salt and a range of test kits for this aquarium as well. Yep. So that's been fabulous. Um, so thank you to Ravi from, um, from Aquaforest team. 
I, I think I've got everyone. How's that? That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you to you, David. And thank you for your charisma and excitement and, and spending the time down here with us too. No worries. I love you. It's my second home. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if the cafe is your second home. Because <laughs> I think you, only for coffees I think and you spend more time in there than here. Than I, only the fabulous cafe juice down. So we've got Kate Australia for the tank. We've got uh, ABS for for the Focus Tronic Light. A Australia, Australia for the for the Glamorca. Glamorca. Mr. Delua. We've got Delua for the Pack Spell and and the Hayman reactor and and the reactor. Reactor here skimmer and the Hayman skimmer, I should say. Yep. Um, and uh, the pro, I say the Pro Reef. So the Pro Reef um, has a, a very large ATO um, at the back here. Um, fabulous suction through the bottom. So you, as you can see, you've got no detritus down the bottom. It's um, it has a circulation pumps built into the back as well. It's all there. Yep. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's an incredible price. It's, it's, it's actually it's a ridiculous a car, price. Yeah, it's, a fra- it's like a car. I'm, I'm hoping incredible. the truck that I've booked at 430 to come and pick no, it up no, mate, sorry. is going to be picking it up you, for me. D- you've got one entry and yeah. you've probably got about one in about 4,000. So good yeah. luck. But That's fine. Yeah. I believe in fate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's been a great weekend. A lot That's of people have presence. come down. I've actually met quite a lot of... Uh, people who've seen my YouTube stuff, which is pretty cool oh, as well. I've been able to meet a lot of uh, actual distributors and suppliers, um, which is really interesting to be able to like chat to people um, and find out what's going on with their company. I think 2018 is going to be an incredible year for the marine hobby. Just it really is. The technology that's, that's going on, so. it's coming in. Um, and the technology that we've been talking about with people today, you know, fabulous aquarium controllers and, and, and the ability to control your KH so easily. Um, fabulous lighting cycles and all of so new, new testing and everything that's been fabulous. Yeah, so Shane needs stuff. to get a mention as well because. Um, Where is he? Shane, come Shane, are you here? Hey, hey, hey come here. I'm just busy hiding. Thank you. Thank you, thank you to Maffa. Last thank you is to Maffa. Yeah. Uh, Marine Aquarium Fanatics of Australia, close on 10,000 uh, fanatical Australians, crazy all of them. Um, in that group. Um, the group's a fabulous group where you can go to get information. I particularly like the MAFA resource page. If you go to MAFA and you look at, there's a link up at the top, unless I'm wrong, uh, there's yeah. a MAFA resource link and there's a whole pile of information, all of this stuff here were printed out, you can get on the MAFA resource page. Fabulous for anyone, beginners or not, you know, everything from quarantine to ATOs and skimming and nitrogen cycle. That's a fabulous resource. And the people on MAFA and, and the admins of MAFA and Shane, these guys do it because they love it. They don't, they don't get anything for it. Uh, they do it because they love it. And what I've seen in the last week of the tremendous devotion they have to the love and love for the hobby, it's, well, it's, well, it's a great that, credit. Thank you. He created all this. Yeah. All you. It's, it's good. It keeps me busy. <laughs> Very busy. It, you get up I'm to a lot slept. of mischief without I'm it. So um, thank you again, um, and thank you to all the suppliers and all the other boys there. Team. Fantastic. They're all downstairs working hard, I hope. That's it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining another episode of FTR TV. Until next time, guys, peace.